there, Bulldog fans, and welcome into the Bulldog Blitz. I'm your host, Mark Minner, ahead on the show today. This is it. The men's basketball league season all comes down to Saturday. Women's basketball fell to Milwaukee on Thursday night, and Matt Howard was given a very special honor. Also, we will have our weekly Blitz breakdown segment and an exclusive interview from Matt Howard's dad from Connersville. A lot to get to, but up first, this Saturday inside Hinkle Fieldhouse, it's senior day for the men's basketball team. The final game this season for the Bulldogs will be against Loyola at 2 p.m. And it's already a sellout. Five seniors will be honored. Matt Howard, Zach Hahn, Alex Anglin, Sean Van Zant, and Grant Leindecker. The five seniors have accounted for 109 victories in their four years at Butler. That's the second most wins of any senior class in Butler history. Butler's on a six-game winning streak and coming off a 79-52 win over UIC as they head toward the Loyola matchup on Saturday. Butler beat the Ramblers back on December 1st in the first league matchup of the season by two points, 65-63. Butler has won seven of the last eight games against Loyola, and they're looking for that trend to continue because it's a mess at the top of the league standings. Let's take a look at where the dogs stand right now. Right atop the league, it's a three-way tie. Cleveland State, Butler, and Milwaukee at 12-5. and five. Everybody's all tied up. Valpo fell to Loyola by 20. Now they fall to 11-6. and six. Wright State at 10 and 7, Detroit at 9 and 8, Green Bay follows right after at 8 and 9, Loyola at 7 and 10 after the win over Valpo, Youngstown State and UIC. Youngstown State will be a crucial team for the Bulldogs as they will take on Milwaukee this Saturday. Milwaukee's at Youngstown State, Green Bay's at Cleveland State, UIC's at Valpo, and of course, Loyola is at Butler. So it is going to be a tough one. Milwaukee right now has the tie break over the Bulldogs, so Butler needs Milwaukee to fall to Youngstown State if they want any chance of hosting this tournament. We said it was senior day for the Bulldogs, and for Matt Howard, it's even more meaningful. Matt was recently named the Academic All-American of the Year and is a role model for all Butler students. But Matt's even a bigger role model in his hometown of Connersville, and this week they're showing their appreciation. This Saturday will mark the last time that Matt Howard's name will be introduced inside Hinkle Fieldhouse. Senior day for Butler signals the final home game for Butler's third all-time leading scorer. But as much as the academic All-American of the Year means to Butler, Matt Howard's influence makes a bigger impact back in his small Hoosier hometown of Connersville. John Seal played basketball for Tony Hinkle's last season at Butler University and resides in Connersville. John knows as well as anybody else what Matt Howard means to the town. I think all, all towns and particularly those in the Midwest have, have seen unemployment and, and hard times come about and it's nice to have something positive to, to look at. For four years, Matt Howard played high school basketball right here in this building known as the Spartan Bowl. It was built back in the late 50s and even though it's located at the middle school here in Connersville, it still seats over 5,000 people. But that's just half the number of people that will pack into Hinkle Fieldhouse on Saturday to see Matt play his final regular season home game. Butler, take it off. This is Matt. Matt Harris is the director of fan development for Butler Athletics, and even though the game's been sold out for quite a while, he's been blanketed with ticket requests this past week. But the biggest so far? the Connersville Mayor's Office. The city of Connersville the last couple years has bought you know, 500, 600 tickets. Well, this year they kept buying more and more and they bought 1,400. In fact, they actually wanted more earlier this week, but I couldn't help them out. So um, they all want to see Matt Howard. Back in Connersville, inside Brian's Bookstore and Coffee Bar, Matt Howard's dad, Stan, and some local friends talk Butler basketball every day. When asked why Matt is so important to this town, Stan echoed a common belief. In a time when we've lost industry, in a time when the economy's bad, I think he represents hope to people. That hard work, you can do something. And, and, um, and that you do it the right way, and doggone it, the bad guys don't always win. It'll be the toughest test of the season for the women's basketball team on Saturday when they travel to take on the 13th ranked Green Bay Phoenix. Butler fell to Milwaukee 73-66 on Thursday night in Wisconsin. Alyssa Pittman had a career-high 25 points, including four three-pointers. Chloe Hamilton had 17 points while adding eight boards. Butler takes on Green Bay at 3 p.m. on Saturday. The Phoenix are 26-1 overall this season, undefeated in league play. It'll be a tough test, and you can catch all of the action at HorizonLeague.com. Now let's take a look 
at the women's basketball standings. And as we said, Green Bay undefeated right now in league play at 15 and 0. They are 26 and 1 overall. Butler right behind right now at 11 and 5. Wright State and Butler battling for that second place spot. Wright State is 10 and 5. That second place important because it gives them the chance to go to the WNIT. Cleveland State 9 and 6 is their record. UIC the Flames at 8 and 7. Milwaukee after the victory over Butler on Thursday night now at 7 and 8. Loyola and Detroit are tied at 5 and 10. Then Valpo at 4 and 12 who the Bulldogs will play in the final game of league play. And Youngstown State rounding things out at the bottom with a 2 and 13 record. But again Green Bay at 15 and 0 and 11 and 5 for the Bulldogs battling at that second spot. Time now for some news and notes around the Butler Athletic Department. On Saturday afternoon, there will be a lot going on during the men's basketball game, but at halftime, four athletes will take center stage. It's the annual Butler Hall of Fame introductions. This year, there are four players that have been selected for the 21st Hall of Fame class. Paul Page, who was a wide receiver for Butler in the mid-80s. Stacy Mellinger, who played volleyball in the late 80s and was named the conference co-player of the year in 1990. Jermaine Jews, who was the guard for the men's basketball team in the early 90s. And finally, Jeremy Aldrick, who was an All-American in 1998 for the men's soccer team that was the winningest team in school history. Again, all of these inductees will be recognized during halftime of the men's game this Saturday. Matt Howard will have to make room on his trophy shelf after learning that he's the 2010-2011 NCAA Division I Academic All-American of the Year. That's the third straight year that Howard has been named to the All-Academic team and is the first player in Butler basketball history to do that. Matt has a GPA of 3.77 in finance and leads Butler in scoring and rebounding. When we come back, we'll have your Blitz breakdown. Lance Rinker and Alyssa Garfinkel will join me in studio. Stay with us right here on the Bulldog Blitz. Welcome back out to the Bulldog Blitz. It's time now for our Blitz Breakdown segment, joined by Lance Rinker and Alyssa Garfinkel, both working with the Butler Collegian. Lance is the assistant sports editor. Alyssa, the multimedia editor, thank you for joining us once again. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we are down to the nitty-gritty now. The Horizon League Saturday is it. Butler will take on Loyola, but right now there's a three-way tie atop the league with Butler, Milwaukee, and Cleveland State. In your so humble opinions, where does this league play out and, and where where's Butler playing for the Horizon League tournament? Well, I think, you know, I think we're going to have to go with Mil Milwaukee in first and then Butler in second. I think we've seen a lot of lead, lead changes. Valpo is up there at one point, Cleveland State now. I think we're going to have to give it to Milwaukee, though. They've been playing well. They have the up on Butler right now. So I think that's where it's going to be. Butler's going to have to travel there. Lance? I would agree, actually. Uh, maybe not surprisingly. They're one of the most... Uh, you know, hot teams right now. They've won basically every conference game in the second half. They've won eight in a row. Um, they're both playing super great basketball. So, uh, got a big win at Cleveland State just last night. So, I'd go with Milwaukee, too. Well, I have to ask, though, if you had told me that Valparaiso was going to lose by 20 at the arc to Loyola, I would have said, you're crazy. So, does that bode well for the chance for Youngstown State to maybe sneak out a victory, Alyssa? I think it does. You know, I, I couldn't agree more. Loyola, you can't imagine that. I would have never thought that, but, yeah. you know, I mean, it happens. Anybody can win on any day. So, for Youngstown State right now, they're in a great position. So, In really a wild Horizon League, stranger things have happened, and it's Youngstown Senior Day. They'll have the home crowd behind them. Uh, yeah, I could see Youngstown pulling off the upset. And, and I guess for Butler, the question then becomes, you know, which is the better location to play in Milwaukee, historically, is not the right venue for the Bulldogs to be in attendance, Lance. No, uh, they went up there just this season and got blown out. So uh, n I wouldn't want to go to Milwaukee if I were Butler, but uh, Cleveland State, they played well this year, got a win there. Uh, but ideally, uh, a win uh, versus Loyola would guarantee them a one or a two spot uh, seed-wise. So maybe they'll even be hosting it if Youngstown can help them out. All right, we've been buzzed. Now moving on to this Saturday's game, Loyola is the opponent for the Bulldogs. It's senior day. If you're going to tell me what the story is going to be, aside from the fact that Matt Howard is going to get a 15-minute standing ovation <laughs> at the beginning, what are we going to expect, Alyssa? I think, you know, we're going to see these seniors all going out hard. You know that Brad Stevens is going to start some of them, most of them, if he can. But at the same time, it's going to be a lot of hard out there. Zach Hahn, Sean Van Zant, Grant Line, Decker, guys that normally aren't in are going to definitely be out there playing aggressive. So I think it's going to be a good, it's going to be emotional, but I think it's going to be a great win, especially Loyola coming off of this loss. They have that advantage right now. 
Uh, I would agree too. Um, I'm excited. I hope Grant Leindecker gets some playing time. <laughs> I've been waiting all year for that. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, but, yeah, I think the home crowd will will them to victory. I really don't see Butler losing in this one. Now, the momentum that they've built over the last several games, they can build this winning streak, sort of a, a smaller version of what they had last year going into the tournament. But is this the kind of team that you expect them to, to make a run in the tournament right now, Lance? Yeah, I think so. They're playing good basketball. Uh, this new lineup has seemed to be going really well. Uh, Stevens likes the way his guys are playing, and I do too. So when they're hot, they're one of the best teams in the conference, and they'll be tough to beat. Yeah, I agree. I think, you know, we've seen lineup changes. We've seen them kind of struggle here and there, but they're on a six-game winning streak. So you couldn't ask for anything better right now, especially at towards the end of the season. But I think at the same time, we're going to have to see them continue to play aggressively. You're going to have to see Matt Howard and, like we always say, Kyle Marshall stepping up and consistently playing because that's where they struggle. We have the guards. It's the posts that are going to have to step up. Okay. Now, right on cue with the buzzer, we look now to the – possibility the Bulldogs maybe don't win this Horizon League tournament. Uh, bracketology, it's been right on that bubble the whole time. So even though they have some tough losses against Evansville at home, you got Youngstown State on the road, if for some reason Bulldogs don't win the tournament, are they an at-large contender? Alyssa? I think it's a toss-up, really. I think it could go either way. Um, I think they're going to have to be very lucky, though. They're going to have to win the Horizon League, and if they don't, then – I think, you know, they have played some great teams. They have, you know, they lost to Duke, right? So I think we're going to have to, it's just going to be a toss-up. It could go either way. I would agree. It's really tough to tell. Uh, they do have some wins versus Florida State and Washington State. So if those teams can do well in their respective conference tournaments, it would help Butler out immensely. But uh, the resume is pretty good. They have some top 50 wins, but it is right there on the bubble. So it doesn't matter now if they, if they advance to the championship and lose in the championship. Well, I mean, is that, does it matter how many games, I guess, they win in this tournament and who they lose to? I think so. I don't think they can afford another loss like a Youngstown State, for example. I think they'll have to win a couple games in the tournament to convince the committee that they're for real. And, and for you, it doesn't matter really who they lose to or, or does it really matter? I think, I think they're going to have to win out. I think they're definitely – they can't afford to lose right now. But, if, you know, if they do, they, win, they lose in the championship, I think they're really going to have to show the committee something that, you know, they're going to have to blow some teams out on their way to be able to advance. And it's interesting, it couldn't have come at a better time that they expanded the tournament to a few more teams, leaving Butler right on that bubble. Mm -hmm. Now we look forward to the Butler women's basketball season, and they have been having some good Horizon League play, but they had a tough loss at Milwaukee on Thursday night. They're battling right at that two spot. They have the same amount of losses as Wright State. And even though Green Bay is kind of at the top of the league right now, that two spots important because it gives them a chance to the WNIT. So, do you think a couple more games left for the women's basketball team? Do they hold on to that second spot? I think they're going to pull it out. I think they've been playing great. One loss right now for them. I don't think it's going to be a big deal for them. They are traveling at Green Bay, so that is going to be a tough game for them, especially if they want to hold on to second place. But I think they can do it. You know, they're going to have to play well against Green Bay, and if they lose, they're going to have to continue and play a lot better against Valpo. That's what it's going to come down to. I agree. Uh, I, don't, I could see Green Bay posing a lot of problems. It's at their place. Uh, but then, of course, they end with Valparaiso. So uh, that should be a win. Valparaiso is kind of a bottom dweller this year. But Wright State, I could see them winning out. So as much as I hate to say it, I think Wright <laughs> State has a pretty decent shot to get that two seed. And, and it's been interesting. We were kind of talking about before we went on the air. But the teams that are left outside of Green Bay, it seems as though Butler could really – and not have any problem with those kind of teams, but it's that Green Bay opponent that is so tough in the league, Lance. Absolutely. Green Bay has done something right for, it seems, a decade now. I mean, their program's been <laughs> yeah. so strong, and they're tough to beat, especially at home. Uh, so, yeah, I think they're the front runner by far in the horizon. Yeah, we've seen, you know, their two, three games up on Butler, much less on, you know, on every other opponent. So, I think they're – Butler's got to find something in them to be able to pull out, but they got to worry about Wright State also. They're going to have to win by a lot and just keep playing and hope that they get that WNIT. And I know you've talked about that they need to find alternative sources for points. Alyssa Pittman had a career-high 25 against Milwaukee but came up short in the effort. And you got to look past those two players because if somebody gets in foul trouble, maybe Brittany Bone or Chloe Hamilton, the team's at a loss. Right, and we've seen Chloe Hamilton get into foul trouble. She sent – she spent most of the time on the bench these past couple games because she's been in foul trouble. So someone else is going to have to step up. Alyssa Pittman, Asia Bass, Claire Fe Freeman, who we always talk about, who's a big contributor for them. They're going to have to step up these next couple games. 
Yeah, I agree. It's kind of the same <laughs> thing with the men actually looking for a consistent third scorer. Uh, but I can see you mentioned Bass and uh, you know Freeman and somebody like that. And Pittman has been pretty consistent as of late. So I, yeah, I, that's definitely a need for the team. All right, now time for both of your favorite parts, the toss-up. We are going to see what is on your mind in the realm of Butler sports. Alyssa, it is your honor. <laughs> well, I want to know what Brad Stevens thought about him being in a commercial. <laughs> 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 Everyone saw it. It's on ESPN all the time, oh, plays yeah. all the time. I want to know if he was okay with it, with his reaction to it. Because, I mean, it was a great commercial, so I want to know what he thought. It's catchy, that's right. Lance, yeah, Lance were you dancing to it, too? Were you <laughs> I doing was, the yeah. yeah. I like the Jim <laughs> Beheim move best, personally, but... Yeah, um, I'm curious about the baseball team. They open up the season in the Carolinas on a three-day road trip. So I know they've struggled in the past, but hopefully they can get off on the right foot this season. Yeah, I, I want to see what they can do differently. They've, in the past, they've kind of struggled. They've been up and down here and there, and they've gone through a lot of lineup changes, as we've seen. So I, I want to see what the, if they can bring anything else to the table. And in talking with Coach Farley, he's really talked about the new pitching staff, new pitching coach, DJ Thronberg, and, and working with the staff and trying to improve because they were middle of the pack last year, so trying to bump their way up in the Horizon League. But I will say that maybe they should be playing the music from that <laughs> commercial during the game to get everybody to do the I want to know things. if... You know how John Wall has his Dougie, if that's yeah. going to be something. Is that the Butler? Is that the new Butler thing? Last hey, year never. It, was, it was too big, yo, from Gordon Hayward. Yeah. This year it's Brad Stevens. You never know. You never know. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us this yeah. week on, on the Blitz Breakdown. Thanks. Thank you. All right, that'll do it for this segment with Lance and Alyssa. Coming up next, a lot more on the Butler Sports, including an interview from a local restaurant in Connersville with Matt Howard's dad. Stay with us on the Bulldog Blitz. Welcome back on to the Bulldog Blitz. Instead of being joined by a coach in studio, this week the Blitz was on the road to Connersville, Indiana. About an hour and a half southeast of Indianapolis lies the hometown of Matt Howard. I had the opportunity to talk with Matt Howard's dad, Stan, and some of his friends at the local coffee shop. We're here in Brian's Bookstore and Coffee Shop here in downtown Connersville, and I'm joined by Stan Howard, Matt's dad. And Stan, this is your normal group of friends. You guys come here almost every day, if not every day. So you want to go ahead and introduce all your friends for me? Well, uh, I'm not sure we're all here, but, I, well, <laughs> we're not all here when we're all here. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> That's a metaphor. That, that is, yeah, I've met him before. And uh, <laughs> to your left is Howard Manifold, a 1948 grad of Butler himself. And over here is the owner of, of this establishment, Brian Kays. Here is uh, Dick Gutman and Mr. Henry Orschel. We've got people in the background that choose not to be on camera that are also here, Mr. Bill Winger, and you know people that probably prefer to remain nameless. We got Michelle up there, who is our wonderful waitress, who also goes by Marlene. <laughs> well, Stan, one thing, the, the, the reason I'm here today and, and the reason that so many people are excited about Saturday, Matt Howard Senior Day, a day to recognize all the accomplishments that Matt has done uh, throughout his tenure at Butler. But I don't think anybody knows him better than you. So you want to just tell me what what is what is the character of Matt Howard? Uh, what what defines him? I think uh, hard work, uh, doing the best you can all, all the time. You know, and uh, I've called in sick one day in 33 years at the post office. I tried to instill that in him, uh, and I think he I, I didn't have to say anything. He picked up on that, and I think it's a, a great example to uh, young men and women everywhere that if you uh, work hard enough, you, you can accomplish something. One thing that has impressed me about Matt, and today it was acknowledged that he get, was receiving the Academic American Award there of the year. It's a very special honor. Uh, how much are academics a focal point of what you've stressed to him, and, and how impressed with, you, with him are you of, of the work that he's done? Well, I think uh, he's, I never uh, was real big on academics myself. <laughs> so uh, I could do it, but I didn't bother. And uh, I'm just glad he didn't take the approach I did. He, he followed, uh, he kind of took after his mother. She was, I think she was sixth in her senior class. And uh, the only uh, Bs I think she ever got were in PE, you know. <laughs> and uh, so, she got straight A's all the time, and I think that's one of the things I remember Brad Stevens saying when he looked at Matt's transcript. He said, I've never seen so many A's. It's um, been impressive to me so far. Connorsville really rallies behind this man. I mean, he really, really does. What, what do you think Matt Howard means? And, and then I'll ask all your, your friends here. What does Matt Howard mean to the city? 
I think he gives in, in a time when we've lost industry, in a time when we uh, the economy's bad. I think he represents that there's a way. You know, it represents hope to people. That hard work, you can do something, and and um, and that you do it the right way. And doggone it, the bad guys don't always win. We'll go around the table now. What, what do you think? You've been a, a resident of Connersville. So you went to Butler University, played for Tony Hinkle. What, what do you think Matt Howard means to this town? Well, Matt means a lot to this town. <clears throat> and the, the greatest talent and the greatest thing that Matt Howard has that, that the people that live here know, that he is a fine young man and a fine gentleman. And I told the story yesterday my wife just passed away recently, and uh, when Matt took the trip to uh, Italy and Switzerland, uh, their a, uh, a trip they had before the season, and my wife had been to some of those places because my daughter went to school in France for a while, Matt came over to my home, and my wife was on oxygen, could not get out of the house, and spent two and a half hours showing her all the pictures and the places that she had been and where he had been and they talked about places that they both had been and that's the kind of a fine young man he is. That's all I have to say. We'll go around. Matt Howard, what does he mean to, what does he mean to this town? He's uh, the finest example. He's a premier student, premier athlete, premier in his worth ethic. He's just one of the finest examples we've seen in this community for a number of years. My story is almost everybody knows who Matt Howard Butler is, except yesterday I was at Methodist Hospital. And my nurse didn't know, I was amazed, but she said she was from Pittsburgh. But I've been, I've, I've been watching Matt for eight years, the four years at CHS, Connorsville High School, and I just met Stan the last few years. And it was fun to watch him no matter what, but it's even more fun to know his parents. Uh, last week I went to the game with him, and it was a late game. It didn't end at 10 o'clock, and Matt didn't come out to after midnight, and that's because he never fails to sign an autograph. All the kids, we were waiting and waiting and waiting, and I don't think he's ever. I've been told by a lot of people. I was active in Big Brothers, and the head of that said Matt always signed autographs. Is it true? Which what we just heard that has Matt ever missed an autograph? Not that I know of. Not not intentionally. His freshman year at Butler. He came, he wanted to come to a Connorsville game. It was a Friday night, and uh, he was going to sneak in during the national anthem because they turned the lights off, you know. He was going to sneak in. What he didn't know was that it was Spartan Reader Night. These kids read books, and they all go out on the floor between JV and varsity game, and they get a T-shirt. It's a big night. <laughs> There's like 800 kids there, okay, or between 800 and 1,000 kids from the, all the elementary schools in the county big night for, you know, because they bring mom and dad and grandma and grandpa, you know, and they fill up the place. Well, they turn the lights down for the national anthem, and Matt sneaks down there, and he sits with us. We always kind of set three rows on the floor, same place, didn't we, Howard? No, always. And uh, we're in the same place. And uh, when the lights come up, one kid saw him. And with two minutes to go in the game, he quit signing autographs. He missed the game, and he didn't turn a kid away. He took pictures. I was I spent the whole game going like this because I was sitting by him. I don't want him in this picture, and I, you don't want me in this picture. Who's that old geezer, you know? And uh, so I was spent all my the game going like this because it picture after picture, and he took time. He talked to every one of them. Well, he wouldn't. That one wouldn't talk to me, well, but he tried. And uh, I think that impressed people more than anything that he could ever stand up and say to anybody. Because the, the radio guys came over and says, can we talk to him at halftime? I said, how many of these kids you want me to tell they can't get his autograph? <laughs> well, maybe after the game. I said, we'll see. <laughs> he just barely made the, And they made the, the coach wait for his post-game show until they talked to Matt <laughs> after the game. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but that just speaks, I think. And people that were there will never forget that because he just took time for every kid. And, he, and, and it... It meant missing the game that he came to see. See his old friends play ball. He missed the whole thing. But he uh, didn't matter because that's a butler way.
When we come back, we'll have a look ahead to this week in Butler Sports. Stay with us on the Bulldog Blitz. This weekend, there's not a lot to see on campus outside of the men's basketball sellout on Saturday. It'll be senior day, and the Bulldogs will host the Loyola Ramblers at 2 p.m. The game can be seen on My Indy Channel 23 and can be heard locally in Indianapolis on 1070 The Fan. It should also be noted that the baseball team is starting up its season in South Carolina. Friday at 4 p.m., they will take on Wofford, then Gardner-Webb on Saturday, and South Carolina Upstate on Sunday before returning home to play in their home opener on Tuesday versus IPFW at 3 p.m. That will just about do it for this week's episode of the Bulldog Blitz. Make sure to catch us on Hoosier TV or online at youtube.com backslash Bulldog Blitz Sports. Until then, I'm Mark Minner. We'll see you right back here on the Bulldog Blitz.